Welcome back to Australia Trains. As the aging Cummins fleet are set to be retired by the end of the decade, I thought I would do a series going over some of the more interesting and special carriages. Starting off with the famous runaway Cummins carriage number 394M, with, in all honesty, I must say, really shouldn't still be on our network today, so it is quite amazing that after its huge crash, managed to be restored and is still on our network to this day. Let's get it. So we'll go over the exterior and also what the train looked like right after the crash, just to give you a picture. But we'll first start off with the executive report of what exactly happened on the night. Shortly before 9.18 p.m. on the 3rd of February 2003, a driverless empty suburban train numbered 5264 rolled away from Board Meadow Station under the influence of gravity and subsequently ran downhill for 16.848 kilometers to Spencer Street Station. At about 9.33 p.m., which is only 15 minutes later, Train 5264 collided with the stationary Backers Marsh Train 8141 at Platform 2 at Spencer Street Station. The estimated speed had an impact of about 75 km per hour. The leading car of 5264 was extensively damaged and was the locomotive of the Backers Marsh Train. Both trains were derailed as a result of the impact, the Backers Marsh Train being forced back some 22 metres in the process. The driver of the Backers Mask train and the V-Line employee jumped clear seconds before the impact. Because the train was at Broadmeadow Station getting ready to return back to Melbourne, all passenger doors were open, all carriage cell and lights were illuminated, and the passenger in indicator displayed on Broadmeadow's platform was displaying the correct information for the intended journey of the train 5264. The gradient between Broadmeadow Station and Spencer Street Station is predominantly falling, there being an overall height difference of 116 metres between the two stations. The, run the runaway train reached speeds of 100 kilometres an hour and passed through level crossings and pedestrian crossings well in excess of the speed design. The next station is Williamstown. This train will be terminating at Williamstown. Now, as we arrive into Williamstown station and just before I show what the train looked like after the crash, just keep this in mind. The train took only 15 minutes to get from Broadmeadow Station to Southern Cross, which is exceptionally fast. Also, other drivers on other services at times had to drive faster and do some crazy things to basically avoid hitting the train, and the runaway tra train was about as close as two seconds away from hitting another commenge around North Melbourne Station. So whilst as bad as this crash was, it could have been a lot, lot worse. Anyway, we arrived at North Williamstown Station. Let's take a look at the exterior of the Comminge and what it looked like after the crash. Now, yes, I will link a website if you want to see other photos as well as the crash. This is the only photo I could use legally because it was obviously in the report, but um, just take a look at this. This is what the carriage number 394M looked like on the night of the crash. Well, there she is. You wouldn't even know anything happened. It's brand new. As she gets, there's Cummings 394M as of January 2022. And it looks speak and span. It is uh, pretty crazy to think. Usually a Cummings in that state would have pretty much been written off and done for good. So it is pretty crazy to see that it is still there. And there's, of course, the stage one. It is a stage one. So you've got to have a little bit of fun with the outdoors there. But... Anyway, a pretty remarkable story to see this set still running almost 20 years after the horrific crash. Anyway, let's head back in the train and take a trip to Williamstown Beach. Returning back to the executive summary, this is exactly how all these events unfolded. The investigation team has determined that the release of the brakes was due to the manner in which the driver's control were isolated and the unplanned movement was due to the park brake not being applied. The investigation team determined that it was not possible for officers to control or stop the runaway movement. Officers did not know whether or not there are passengers on the train, and this constrained their assessment of op options, such as seeking to derail the train or route it into a siding. Metro officers were forced to formulate contingency measures on the run. The efforts of the officers in this regard were severely hampered by the lack of visual indication of the train position and a system of, of voice com communications that is not optimised for contingency broadcasts. For the majority of the journey, officers were relying on third-party information being relayed from the station and signalling personnel in the field. 
And if you want to know how scary the night could have been, take a listen to this. Train 5264 came within a second of being placed on a collision course with the previous Broadmeadows to Flinders Street's train, number 5262, in the vicinity of North Melbourne. Train 5262 had about 30 to 40 passengers on board. The investigation team determined that officers made a conscious decision to route the train 5264 into the unwired precinct of Spencer Street Station. If they have not done so, the train would have most likely continued into the heart of Melbourne suburban network towards Flinders Street Station. Anyway, these are just excerpts of the report that I read. I will link the report and images of the crash in the description if you would like to take a read and uh, basically look at what the night was like. Um, but anyway, let's do one last thing before we farewell the train. This is a diagram of basically how high the tracks are from the ground in terms of elevation and stations with level crossings. As we can see, the train passed seven level crossings on the way to Spencer Street and took roughly 15 minutes to get there. Usually it takes about half an hour just to give you an idea of how quick the train was actually going. And now it is sadly time to farewell the train from Seddon Station. Thanks so much for watching and hope you enjoyed this video.